walk into this room at your own risk. Because it leads to the future. Not a future that will be, but one that might be. This is not a new world. It is simply an extension of what began in the old one. It has patterned itself after every dictator who has ever planted the ripping imprint of a boot on the pages of history since the beginning of time. It has refinements, technological advances, and a more sophisticated approach to the destruction of human freedom. But like every one of the super states that preceded it, it has one iron rule. Logic is an enemy and truth is a menace. Any state, any entity, any ideology that fails to recognize the worth, the dignity, the rights of man, that state is obsolete. A case to be filed under M for Mankind in the Twilight Zone. Well, I have a little bit of a true life mystery for you. In late 2016, a CIA operative based in Cuba began complaining about the sudden onset of a bizarre illness. The agent visited the medical office in the U.S. Embassy in Havana complaining of strange vibrations, high-pitched sounds, crushing headaches and dizziness. A month later, two more CIA operatives visited the clinic complaining of the same strange symptoms. There was really no explanation, no understanding of what could have caused these spies to suddenly fall ill. Was it a chemical they had all been exposed to? Was it environmental, something in the air? No one knew. Things became alarming when a dozen more people, all U.S. diplomats, came down with the same mysterious illness. They all complained of the same thing, high-pitched ringing sounds in their ears paired with debilitating headaches, vertigo, and feelings of strange vibrations. The symptoms would last from 20 seconds to 30 minutes and always happened while the diplomat was at home or in hotel rooms. And the oddest part about it was others nearby, be they family members or guests staying in nearby rooms, heard and felt nothing. Nearly a dozen Canadian diplomats began coming down with the same strange symptoms. In one case, a Canadian diplomat and his wife felt a wave of pressure flow over them in the middle of the night and their children awoke with nosebleeds. Suspicions began to mount that these symptoms were not environmental or chemical. American diplomats began to think they were under attack. The Canadians moved their diplomats away from their U.S. counterparts, hoping to distance themselves from whatever was coming after the Americans. By the end of 2018, 24 U.S. diplomats, CIA agents, and members of their families, along with the dozen Canadians, experienced the high-pitched sound, pressure, and headaches. Worst yet, when doctors examined these patients, they found brain damage. The injuries sustained by many of those involved looked just like concussions, but without the head trauma. Trump pointed the finger at the Cuban government and called on everyone at the U.S. Embassy to abandon their post. The Cubans denied any involvement, and many agreed, speculating the Cubans couldn't possibly have a weapon this sophisticated. But no one even knew what the weapon was. Some believed it was a sonic attack of some sort. Others thought it was radio frequency microwaves. Politicians held congressional hearings. Experts were called in for advice. But there were no answers. No one knew. People thought maybe it was a virus, or some even started to think that diplomats had just gone crazy, that they were suffering from some sort of mass collective hysteria. As time went on, less attention was paid to the strange sounds heard throughout 2017 by diplomats in Cuba. It was a one-off anomaly. But then... It wasn't. In spring of 2018, U.S. diplomats in China began reporting the same strange symptoms, some claiming to have been experiencing them since late 2017. And this set off alarm bells in Washington, and by summer, several China-based diplomats had been evacuated. The State Department issued a health warning, and a task force was sent to investigate. Since then, over 150 cases in total have been reported in areas all around the world affecting CIA personnel, U.S. military diplomats, and their families. Reports have been filed in Russia, Poland, Taiwan, Australia, Colombia, Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, Berlin. And interestingly, the most cases reported outside of Havana, Cuba, have been reported in Vienna, Austria, with over 20 known attacks. And the attacks haven't been limited to foreign soil. Twice, once in 2019 and once again in 2020, White House officials have reported the same symptoms, once against a White House official in a Virginia suburb while walking her dog, and again on the Ellipse, a lawn adjacent to the White House. Now, this story is all sorts of things, mysterious, bizarre, frightening, intriguing. But why am I bringing this up today? 
because yesterday, as Vice President Kamala Harris was set to make her way from Singapore to Vietnam, there was another attack, this time against two U.S. diplomats in Hanoi, the very place Harris was scheduled to arrive. And though Kamala Harris's trip was delayed, she did end up continuing on with her journey, and reports are the two affected diplomats were attacked in their homes and are being evacuated. But this incident shows us how vulnerable we are. We still have no idea who is behind these attacks, nor what weapon is being used, or at least us lay people have no idea. Now, of course, a lot of theories surround the Russians. Uh, GQ's Julie, Julia Ihoff reported CIA investigators were using mobile phone tracking to deduce who was nearby during various attacks. And in several of the attacks, including in Poland, Georgia, Australia, and Taiwan, individuals suspected of being FSB agents were within range of the affected CIA operative. Politico reported that three current and former U.S. officials with direct knowledge said the U.S. government suspects that Russia's military intelligence agency, the GRU, was behind the alleged attacks. Now, I'm personally someone who's quite skeptical of the Russia hysteria that has plagued our public discourse for the past few years. I'm also someone who's very anti-interventionist. But I can't deny that these attacks are serious. And no matter who is behind them, be it Russia, China, or one of the many other countries who has it out for us, these attacks are extremely, extremely serious. This sort of sophisticated weapon with the potential of giving our operatives and diplomats lifelong brain injuries is nothing to balk at. This is serious and even more concerning if this could be weaponized on a mass scale. Now, hopefully this isn't something that could happen. But Alyssa, you were with the Department of Defense, so dish it. What do you know? So I'm going to say what I can, but have to plead the fifth on a bit of this. Um, full disclosure, I was likely a target of one of these attacks and have worked with the CIA task force that's been established to investigate them. The symptoms range uh, in severity. As you mentioned, there was this instance of a former White House official who was fully debilitated. Others have just experienced um, what feels like sound wave problems, throbbing in the head. Um, it can feel like your ears are popping. No confirmation in my particular instance if it was, in fact, uh, a result of one of these attacks, but I went through the channels of reporting. And uh, the former administration s stood up a task force dedicated to investig investigating this. The current administration has turned that into a full interagency effort. To your point, it's very serious. Um, it's something that needs to be looked into because, of course, if it could be something that was mass used against the U.S. or other countries abroad, we need to get to the bottom of what this technology is. Um, and beyond that, I don't know that there's much more I could publicly speak to. But, Ryan, your thoughts? Well, yeah, I mean, let, let me take the, the the skeptical side of this. Not 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 skeptical of the symptoms. I think that everybody who is reporting uh, the symptoms from Melissa to everybody else is 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 accurately reporting symptoms. But I think that we we need to look for other explanations as well. As long as we don't have the weapon itself, you know. So uh, Kim Kim said this is a very this is a very serious weapon. If there's a weapon that can do this, well, where's the weapon? Like so, the, the the U.S. intelligence community has said, well, we think that it's either Russia, China, Iran, or somebody else has this weapon. So th that's crazy. Like, show show us this show us this weapon that does this thing. It, or and all of these countries came up with this technology that that we can't explain, that we have no evidence of, that we have no insight to, yet it exists and it and it is invisibly attacking our people around the world. So there's this thing, there was this thing from the 1950s to the 1970s called the Moscow Signal, very similar phenomenon. And so, so people in the Moscow embassy started saying that they were, you know, they, that they were having these, these types of symptoms. Then they then measured that there were higher levels of, of microwaves coming into the Moscow embassy than there were kind of outside the embassy. And it created this panic throughout the continental U.S. as well, that the, that Moscow signal, that the that that the Russians had this microwave technology that was that was going to be able to attack people. That's actually probably where where we get this tinfoil hat idea from, because people were saying, well, if there's microwaves out there, I'm going to protect myself from them. And tinfoil is going to block uh, the, mic the microwave, the microwave, the microwaves here. There was finally a study done in the late 1970s that looked at it and said, no, actually, we, ha we have no evidence whatsoever that the health implications are connected to these, uh, these, microwave, uh, to this, these microwaves that we're detecting in the embassy. And, and, their, and their final guess was it was some type of an attempt at espionage from the Soviets. So they were, they were accurately detecting like slightly higher levels of microwaves. 
but they said there's, there's no medical evidence that it causes any, any health implications. And so unless somebody can point to the, the weapon, the, the method that this would be done, then I don't think we can say that it, because there were some Russians, you know, Russian agents in the vicinity of people you know, who had these symptoms, that, that we can say it was anything other than, say, like a, a migraine or some other type of, of health implication. But I, may, 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 maybe, it, maybe it exists, but there isn't any evidence that it does, is, well, is, would be my argument. I think, I think Ryan makes a valid point. I take a slightly different perspective, but I do think that the vast majority of the reporting that's public on this, and there's quite a bit that isn't public, indicates that it could be tied to surveillance or to monitoring. So I think it's important that we separate the notion of this is intended to be a weapon so much as this is intended to gather information or to you know monitor one's devices. Um, so I think that that's going to be an important thing that the task force will have to look at. What is the motive? We shouldn't assume that this is purely being done to hurt and injure people. We should look at all facets of potentially why it's being done. But I would say, you know, to Ryan's point, um, when I worked in the Department of Defense, the Pentagon actually has any external facing windows have blockers up to block radio waves because this kind of technology has existed for 50 plus years, um, but it's generally been associated more with surveillance than it has as any sort mm -hmm. of a weapon. So that's kind of the open question. In that sense, right. you know, we could be doing it to ourselves. Like if, if, it is, if it is some type of wireless technology that that is create you know that, that is influencing the environment that that is then influencing our our health. Uh, usually, there are going to be other CIA agents or other U.S. agents around the people who've gotten sick. So it might be our own technology that is that is incidentally and accidentally kind of harming us. I, I don't think we can rule out the possibility that our that our you know tech explosion uh, it, you know has some health implications. Well, I know that the sound experts are saying they don't think it is sonic or. It, just because it does cause brain damage. And so that's kind of the that's the real concern is that it's actually changing, uh, you know, the the gray matter in the brain. And so that's uh, that's where it, it does feel slightly like, you know, is this done for surveillance? Is this done for oh, as some sort of a weapon? We don't really know. But um, it is still very scary to have this happen to you. And Alyssa, I just want to ask you, are you able to tell us, did this happen here on U.S. soil or, or did your attack happen somewhere else? My incident happened on U.S. soil. And I would say I want to make sure to not diminish um, the, the those who were victims of it, whatever that may be, because I have heard cases where it was severely painful and debilitating for folks. Mine was extremely uncomfortable and brief. Um, and I've shared, you know, a, a minute by minute breakdown with the task force um, if it was, in fact, to this. I want to give that caveat. Um, but it's something that, you know, the most important thing is determining what is the goal with this, what is the technology, and then, of course, right. protecting diplomats and government officials who might be exposed. Yeah, very strange. Very strange that it can also just target certain people and others aren't feeling it. And, you know, that's so bizarre about the whole thing as well. So uh, very, very intriguing. And I'm sure we'll hopefully get more information as time goes on on this intriguing mystery that is